I would like to maybe keep it uh, not, not, enough, not, not long enough so that you can also uh, go and having lunch and whatever. Um, but I, I would start, I don't know where to start, uh, from maybe uh, questions. Can we start from questions and then we can move on from, from that, maybe? So why you are here? Why you, you, uh, you would like to have an overview and a practical overview on Git and GitHub if you already did it on very well on the software engineering course? If you have a, so we can start from your question and then we can maybe move on from that. So which are the things that are not clear or maybe not super clear? It could be everything or it could be a subset of everything. Nothing. Oh. I, I don't know how to okay. And yeah. that's it. That's the main issue. How to use it in Visual Studio Code? Yes. So okay, you you have two ways to use. Um, So let's use this uh, as an example. This is actually a repository, right? The, the one uh, that is on GitHub and you don't have access to. So you have access in the repository in read-only. You don't have uh, written access. So you have two ways to, to use it. Either, uh, I think that one is the way that you have seen in the, in the software engineering course, writing in terminal, right? Um, and the other one, if you already have a repository cloned on your, on your computer, you can use this source control here, in which you can see the change. Um, you can discard all changes. You can stage all changes. And what is staging? You can stage all changes. So let's, let me, well, no, I don't want to stage all changes now. Uh, because we want to upload the node, node modules um, folder. And then after you, you, um, you, you stage everything. Where is gone? Um, probably here, you will see a direction appearing. So, uh, let me just do one thi this thing here. Um, uh, let me add, uh, I die. Um, let me add the node modules on gitignore. You, you know what is gitignore, right? Hmm? In theory. Um, oh. So I, I typically do like in the um, in the software engineering course. I, I use the the, the 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 console, not opening. Uh, so git ignore is a file that can be in the root of the directory, as you know, uh, that stored the list of elements to be ignored on Git from that moment on. So if something is already versioned, you, you cannot ignore it in the past, but you cannot it from that moment on. And you can write either the, uh, so in this case, I'm, I'm ignoring only the, the temporary file that my cause creates, uh, but you can also add uh, folders. or extensions, maybe not that one, but hmm? so I if you save these, not models, 
If you save this, um, and, and, and I stage it, oh, okay, here, no, let me do this. Um, because I just opened a subfolder in the repository, so I need to open the entire repository to use it here. Uh, you see here that Gignor is modified and you have these new things here and you see you don't see anymore the node modules because it's the, now it's in the Gignor. So instead of 500, it, it, it needed uh, a refresh operat operation to, to do that. I, I close the reopen but also here uh, with refresh you can get it. But since my Gignor was in the root folder, Probably it's not visible from the under folder, but you, you, you don't have a repository like this with auto folders. You will have just two folders at the end, one with React code and the other one with the server side code. And uh, so you, it, it should be easier. So in this case, I can stage all changes. And because I want to commit everything, yes. And here I can commit the messages, hmm? so nothing. And uh, you can say exercise made in class. And at this moment, everything is committed and I can, clicking here, push to, okay. Uh, push everything on the repository. And so I see no, no further change, and here is uh, nothing is, is, is underlined or something else. And if I have instead an existing repository that I want to get, I can go clone here and select clone repository. And here I can either clone from GitHub, but it typically, I think that it gets from your personal space in GitHub, or you can paste here the URL of the repository. So it could be the GitHub repository, it could be the GitLab repository, because it's just Git. Mm. And so if you go here, mm, um, github.com, I never remember the, the card name, this one. Yes, uh, and you, I don't know, you want to clone materials, you go here in code and select here the address to, to clone with. Uh, if you are logged in, you can also see the SSH key, otherwise uh, you only see HTTPS. So you copy here, you paste it here. It is the same link with dot git in the, in the end, basically on GitHub. It's the same link that you have in the browser. And then you press enter, it asks you for username and password. Username and password on GitHub, and then ask you for where, I don't remember my username, my password on GitHub, so I'm not going to do it now. But they ask you for username and password to authenticate. Uh, oh, probably not, because this is a public, okay. Uh, if it's private, hmm, so something that only you can access, it will ask you for username and password. If it's public and you can download it, uh, it will ask you where to put it. Uh, and then you can select and is cloning. And then you, also, you can also open from here directly in Visual Studio Code. And you have the entire repository. See also here you have this git ignore that has just um, the temporary file on Macos. And this is just a text file with one element per line. This is how to use in Visual Studio Code. If you know all the, and now you see all, all the terms are the same, commit, push, pull. Um, other questions? It was uh, so easy, or it was easy. If it was just this, it was easy. Other questions?
No? Nobody? No. Was just that? No, okay. Tell me. No. Let's use this moment. Hmm. Yeah. Tell me. No, you can also, I mean, not a problem. We are here for, for that. Mm. Okay, so mer merge request is not something, uh, okay. There are two, two separate topics. Um, but we can ask also them, yes, since they didn't have any questions, so they can help. Uh, no, so merge request is actually not a feature of Git. Merge request is a feature that GitHub added, and then other use it because it was a, a, a nice idea for them. But the idea for merge request is that you have, uh, it, GitHub is called it pull request, but it's, it's the same. Um, so you have you doing some changes in your own repository, and then so you starting from a repository, you fork your repository, right? Uh, it was this that they meant for merge request, I imagine. You fork the repository, you have another repository, or you have another branch of the same repository. Um, it's not a branch; it's not really needed a uh, merge request, but you you have another repository, the stem from an original repository in some way and you want to go back. You want to merge your work with the original work. So this is the merge request. You are requesting to the owner of the repository of the maintainer of the branch to add, to include your request, your changes in the repository. So they will go to a process, okay, I'm accepting this, this uh, covering test is uh, not passing test, and I will give, say no, please refine this, and then after you refine this. But it's something that happens in more in the graphical interface than not in, in, in Git. And so here you can see the pull request for something. You can inspect code. Um, so let me take one project that has for sure Here you have a pull, pull request. So this is merging one commit from this epsilon fix whatever that is a separate repository from another person to Facebook main. That is the main branch of this repository. So this is asking for a pull request or merge request. So asking to merge something from an external repository that started from here to the main repository. And here, well, this is React, so they have a procedure in place. Uh, you, you need to explain why you want to, to have this merged back into the React core, because once it's there, it's, it's for everybody. And then people can say, okay, these are the changes, and I can accept it, I can put it in the review, I can say yes, I can say no, there is uh, all the process that, but it's, it's here, it's in the, the, user, in the user interface mostly, uh, more than in the, it's not Git, the, the merge request in this case, or or the fork mechanism, et cetera. Mm. It's, it's something that they built after. Branches instead, branches is a different, branches, um, so here you see React has a lot of branches. Mm. Uh, all repositories have one branch by default. It was called master and now it's called main that is the principal, the main repository, the main branch where all the things in the, in the repository goes. So all, all of this is not, is not useful for, for us because we just have one repository. We, you just have one individual repository working alone for the project with one branch. You can do m multiple branch, but it's not really uh, necessary here. While in software engineering, uh, it is, uh, I understand. Uh, I understand why also it is. Uh, but you can have branches. So the idea of branches is that they are really, really lightweight. And in Git. So all is on a branch, is the main branch. Then at a certain point you can say, well, I would start from this specific position on a branch, I would like to do something, a change. 
And then there are various strategies, various philosophy on when to create a branch or not, but let's not go that here. Uh, you can create this, so you have this tree that is the main branch, is the tree actually, and you create some branches out of the tree, and then also some branches out of the branches if you want to continue working on features. So let's say you have working feature, you have a stable product and you want to work on feature one. So you branch your product so that the main branch will remain safe, uh, not, the, not the developing fun part, but just the stable part, and you're branching the feature, working on the feature. At a certain point where you're satisfied or you completed the work, you can ask a uh, merge between the branch and the main, um, the main branch. So in an easy way, in an easy case, that will be automatically, because maybe nobody changed anything in the main branch, or, you, uh, or the changes that you add didn't uh, modify any of the file that you modify in the branch, so that will be automatically merged. Uh, but if you change file A, and the main branch file A was changed because it was bug fixing, et cetera, then it would be a conflict and that wouldn't be possible to merge the branch uh, automatically. And so the person responsible for branching should by hand solving the conflict. Mm -hmm. And all repositories as branch, that means that you, in a single moment, have, if you just have the main branch, you have twice the main branch, right? Because you have the local repository and the remote repository. And your main branch of the local repository can or cannot be, well, the main branch typically track the remote repository, but you can have branches locally that you don't have remotely and vice versa. So there, there, there doesn't need to be a match one-to-one -one between local branches and remote branches. You can have local branches, then you merge on your main and then commit and push your main that is tracked to, the re to one of the remote branches, to the main or one of the remote repositories. Um, but you can also, so that local branch is just local, never reach uh, a remote repository. Yes, more or less. So branches are really powerful in, in like, they're like in JavaScript. You can do whatever you want with branches. They are very, very flexible and lightweight. How does they build? Because they are m basically pointers to a specific moment in time, so they don't get a lot of information with them, uh, et cetera, in Git. In other version system, yes. So you, by default, when you create a remote repository, you have, uh, and you link on a local repository, you have the, the remote that is typically called origin, but it's just a name. You can also call it whatever. And that origin that is like this as um, a main branch and many other branch. And but you can also have multiple remote repositories. You can have a remote repository on GitHub, one on GitLab, one on Bitbucket, and all linked to synchronize with your single local repository if you want. You can commit maybe on GitHub's only push on GitHub only, maybe stable changes and use maybe a private repository somewhere else to maybe unstable changes and then uh, to have multiple copies or to have multiple people working with these versions, etc. Okay, any other question? No, uh, so um, branch is something that is in Git. You, when you start a repository, even if you don't have a remote repository, because you can also have a local repository, right? You don't need to have necessarily a remote repository. You have a branch by default that is the main slash master. Uh, it's currently main, but you, if you have all the repository, you can also find master as a name. And this is a branch. And you can create branch, this is in inside the Git as a versioning system. Fork is like the merge request, something that they added after. Mm? It's a way to, here instead, here for instance you have fork, where is fork? Here. Mm? You can press it and what GitHub on remote is going to do is to create a copy of this repository in your 
in one of your personal spaces and maintaining the link between this repository and the other repository. But this is not something built within Git. This is something that we build after to enable collaboration between different repositories owners. And this fork is uh, one way and the other way is the merge request, essentially. You fork to do a merge request or you fork to keep a copy for yourself to experiment. But typically you fork, you ch make some changes and then you contribute back to the original repository. Yeah, a, a typically fork is made by the user interface like here. So you fork the repository and the remote system will create a new repository for you remotely and then you can clone that repository to work in, in local, to have your local repository and your working copy. That includes the staging area. No, um, no. <laughs> for the big lab, you, we, we are going to use the same system that we are going to use uh, for the exam. That is, uh, that using Git, um, so in the end you have a repository, um, but it's called the GitHub Classroom. Mm -hmm. So GitHub Classroom is yet another software in the browser made by GitHub to handle and generate repositories for classes. Mm -hmm. So what you are going to do, for instance, for the big lab is to accept an invitation to the Big Lab number one on this website. Uh, you will uh, create your group. Mm, so you, there you should, be, you should find your name among the, the, roster, the students' names that, are, that we, we will upload there. You will compose your group and because it's a group assignment and this will create for you a remote repository starting from a template. So probably for Big Lab one, no, but for Big Lab two, probably yes. And also for the exam, for a template. So you start from a repository that has some, something in it, in it. It's a template and that, at that point you use Git. Clone, push, pull. And that in that moment is using a, a repository. And at a certain point when you have done, you, we probably ask you to create a tag on the remote repository that say finished, final. So this is the version that we want to, want you to grade, to evaluate. Uh, under a certain, by a certain deadline. Yeah, for the, I can show you, one of the last year. Um, uh, so you basically will log in here, you will accept a, a link from this website. This is the, the admin part. Um, uh, okay, here. So for instance, this was the Big Lab one. So student had an invite link. Maybe. And uh, so Teams. These are automatically created, so this, is a, this was one team of last year. Um, and this team has two repositories, one for Big Lab 1, one for Big Lab 2. And then at a certain point, you see these have, uh, the template was probably a folder and this is README. Uh, and so you have this repository that is shared among the, the team. So only team members will see this repository. This is private. So only team members see this repository, only us, also us, because we need to, to grade it at a certain point. Um, and the people in the team share this repository. So this is the remote repository. You can clone it and work on it using normal, let's say, Git uh, to put here. But uh, you see here, for instance, they, they decided to have multiple branches, or maybe we asked for multiple branches, I don't remember. But you know, they, they are created one branch per week and in the end they merged. Um, so they're starting from empty, create week one, work on week one, and then merge in week two. So continue that week five has basically everything. And then we probably ask them to merge everything back on the, mm, let me see. Yes, finished, it seems. Uh, 
uh, merge everything back on the main. Hmm? But um, but it's it's done. It's you and the repository, and we. But there is no merge request. There's no anything else. It's you working on your own with your repository as a group. And so if you generate conflicts among you, you have to fix it, but it's something that you generated. If you don't, no conflicts to, 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 to handle. Ah, this was the, for the Italian course, so it's... Um, yeah. Branches are meant to, you know, to create a branch, to continue. So I'm branching on week one, and then I continue on that branch. Like imagine a tree, no? you continue to grow this branch up to a certain point, and then at a certain point you cut off the branch and you put it back in the main tree. A tag is just one moment in time. Mm? So here, for instance, there is up tag, that is the tag final, and it's just a link to a specific commit in a specific branch. And it's just saying, okay, this is version one. This commit made that specific day is version one, and just that one. It's not a series of commits like in a branch. It's just one moment in time to fix one moment in time. Like, okay, this is the release. So here, for instance, we use the final tag to say, okay, this is the tag of the commit that they want to be graded. So if you commit after that, you have in the branch, you have in, the, in, the, in all the branches, but we are going to use this link here to, so any commits after that moment in time will be ignored. It never happens because you clearly create the final when it's really final. But if, you, if they want to continue working on this for any reason, uh, they can, and we can still get the, fir the version that they graded, that they, con that they give us for grading, through the final tag. So the tag is just a moment in time. And this is Git. Mm. So it's not GitHub, it's just Git. So you can have also local tags and remote tags and they could be or not synchronized. Like branches. Anything else? No. Okay. Any other curiosity, unclear point? Also for software engineering, if you want, if not. <laughs> I can get an a coffee from the one of the professors. I, I shared the, the office with one of the professors. So <laughs> All set? Okay, then if you, if you have any question also later on, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But here again, here in Wizards Studio Code, is th there was the main question. Just here in this, here you have everything to, to, to get starting to, to continuing. If you have just the repository, the entire repository open on Wizards Studio. If you have just a part, maybe you have some strange behavior, but if you have the, the root folder of the repository, from that menu here, you have the, the main operation. So commit, pull, push, here it's called sync, actually. But um, commit, pull, push, stage, add, not stage, add, and probably conflict probably should need to be handled by hand, automatically, uh, by hand. Um, we have some help, but uh, things that cannot be merged automatically will need to be handled by hand. Okay. No problem. <laughs>